What's the future of .NET? Is .NET Framework just dead? Is .NET Core dead? Is .NET 5 the way to go? What are all these different frameworks and how do they fit together? Those are some of the questions we're going to answer on this episode of Dev Questions. My name is Tim Corey, and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. Now, sometimes that requires coding videos, but sometimes there's questions around the coding that need answered. And that's what this series is all about. If you like this type of thing, or if you're interested in C Sharp coding in general, hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that bell, not bell icon, whatever it is, get notified. Okay. Um, also hit the like button if you like this video. So, .NET 5 is what's coming. And actually, .NET 6 is coming right behind that. So .NET 5 is coming out in September of 2020, somewhere around there. And then .NET 6 is 2021, around the same time frame. So the question has come up, well, with that unification of .NET, and that's one of the things it's doing, is it's going to unify in the .NET 5 or .NET 6 time frame, we're going to unify all of .NET under one .NET. Okay, so the question is, well, is .NET Core then dead? Should we not learn .NET Core? And the answer is no. .NET Core is the next step towards .NET 5. And so that'll be merged in with Xamarin. Now, one of the questions that comes out of that is, what about .NET Framework? Should I just stay on .NET Framework for now because it'll be merged into .NET 5 and we're all fine? No, you shouldn't. You should get off .NET Framework when you can. The .NET Framework is not merging into .NET 5. .NET Framework has stopped right where it's at. It's not going to have any further development done on it, except for potentially some bug fixes for security concerns. Not bug fixes necessarily even for features. All right, It's been declared basically feature complete and done. Now, that raises the next question. There's a lot of questions surround this topic. And the next question is, okay, so then I shouldn't do have anything to do with .NET Framework. I should avoid it, and I have to get everything off it. No. And that I know that's a little confusing. The .NET Framework is still a great platform to have your code on. It's being long-term supported, meaning it's still supported, even though there's no new changes coming to it. So you can still use it in a production environment with the support of Microsoft, with the support of other developers for a long time to come. Now, if you're doing new development, I would encourage you to get on the latest version of .NET. Currently, that's .NET, uh, .NET Core. I think it's 3.2 is officially the number for it. 3.1, 3.2. Um, that that's the latest version right now. When .NET 5 comes out, I'll encourage you to start new development in .NET 5. Always start with the latest version that's production ready. That does not mean that right now you should write .NET 5 code. Except in uh, testing to figure out how it's going to work in the future, kind of possibly, or to help out the development team, or for just fun, but otherwise, for production applications, use the latest production-ready version. The long-term support version right now is .NET Core 3.1. That's the one that's going to be long-term supported. So that's the one I'd recommend for production applications that are new. But for existing applications, .NET Framework-based, for example, they're still supported at that .NET Framework version. Now, if you can, upgrade them to .NET Core now. Now, I've done a few videos on upgrading to .NET Core. In fact, the Timco Retail Manager series, we designed that entire series around starting with a .NET Framework application that's a, a regular line of business application that you might find in the real world. And then we intentioned it in .NET Framework so that we could upgrade it to .NET Core and see how that upgrade process went, because that's a great skill to have right now. I also have a full course on upgrading to .NET Core. 
it's important to learn that skill because I really encourage you, if you can, take your .NET Framework applications and upgrade them to .NET Core. Now, the reason why is, there's a couple reasons why. One, .NET Core is faster than .NET Framework when running the same C-sharp code. Now, it depends on which C-sharp code you have, how much faster. It's not a one-size-fits-all, this is how much faster it is. But you'll see around a 30% increase in speed of your application in general for a .NET framework to .NET Core upgrade, changing no other code. Now, you're going to have to change some code or tweak it, possibly, in order to get it to work with .NET Core, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the same C-sharp code. Now, .NET Framework code, that C-sharp code is practically the same C-sharp code as you'll find in .NET Core. I did a video on comparing .NET Core and .NET Framework, and that confused some people because I took an MVC project in .NET Framework and MVC project in .NET Core, and I compared the differences and people said, well, yeah, but you're comparing a, a web application or a specific web. We want to see what the difference is in the actual framework. Well, from a developer's perspective, there isn't much of one. The same C-sharp code, how you write an if statement in, C in .NET Framework is the same as .NET Core. In fact, in the, the upgrade videos I've done, the biggest part of the upgrade is changing the CS proj file. When you change that file, sometimes with simpler applications, that's all you have to do. And it went from .NET Framework to .NET Core. So the differences aren't about the code for the most part, for about 95% of cases. The difference is how that code is, is compiled, how it's built, what powers it. So moving to .NET Core doesn't have to be this redo everything project. It's just a matter of finding the things that are not .NET Core compatible and instead getting those replacement versions. So moving to .NET Core is possible and I would encourage it. Even though .NET Framework is long-term supported, it's not getting new updates. It is feature complete, but it's not getting new updates, which means that uh, things like handling the GDPRs request for uh, accepting cookies on websites. That's built right into .NET Core. It's not in the .NET framework. So you have to write that code yourself. So improvements in how we do SSL and forcing SSL as the, the required way of transmitting web application uh, data across the wire. That's built right into .NET Core. We have to do a few more tweaks in .NET framework. There's just things to make it easier in .NET Core. So it's important to move, but you also get a lot of benefits in moving, okay? So that also sets you up then for .NET 5. Because when .NET 5 comes out, there will be less, but there will be somewhat of an upgrade process to that. Going from .NET Core will be a whole lot easier than going from .NET Framework. Now you're jumping two major frameworks. So I encourage you, do a jump now, and then it'll be a lot easier to transition to the next level if you want to, okay? So .NET Framework is not dead. .NET Core is the way to go right now. Going forward, .NET 5 has a bright new future, okay? So we're getting better. The unification of, of .NET in the .NET 5 slash 6 time frame is going to be very valuable. This is going to bring cross-platform desktop development, something we've been asking for for a long time. That's coming to the unified .NET platform. And there's a lot of decisions still you made. So we can't answer every question about how that's going to work and what the code's going to look like and how we move forward. The key here is for now, move to .NET Core. Get used to that. Get a better understanding of how .NET Core works. Now, one of the questions that comes as well is, okay, I want to be on the cutting edge. I want to be on the latest thing. Does that mean I should not learn anything .NET Framework? And the answer is no. You should learn .NET Framework 
for a couple of reasons. First of all, that C-sharp code is probably the same exact C-sharp code you'll need in .NET Core. So while there might not be as many .NET Core tutorials out there as there are .NET Framework, you can learn from those .NET Framework videos. In fact, I have a number of videos on this channel about .NET Framework that relate almost identically to .NET Core. So you can do that same work in .NET Core and say and see 98% of the same results. You might have to make a couple of tweaks, which I'll teach you about in the .NET Core videos where I cover those topics. So still learn from .NET Framework. Also, and this is something that's hard for new developers. Yes, you want to learn the latest and greatest. Yes, you want to learn the best. But when it comes to business, you're going to be behind almost all the time. Unless you're working for a brand new company that's just starting out, you're going to use frameworks, you're going to use code that's old. It may be two years old, it may be five years old, maybe 10 years old, or even 20. It's going to be older. I just talked recently to a person who he can't get off of Windows XP because it's got embedded versions for his mobile devices, mobile uh, checkout stations for a cash register. So he has to work with .NET 4, which is pre.NET 4.5, which is pre.NET Core, which is pre, of course, .NET 5. So he's not looking at .NET 5. He's looking at, could I even get to .NET 4.5, which is old technology. So when you work for a company, you have to work with what they have. There's a lot of reasons why companies don't just upgrade to the latest version of something. It's expensive. It may require a lot of time and effort to redo something just to have what you did, you had six months ago in a newer version. That's not very cost effective. So you will be working with older technology sometimes. What I teach you is, okay, here's how to then upgrade that to the latest version so that you can be more valuable in those organizations because they have the older code, you can help move them towards newer environments, maybe slowly over time. So you're still going to need to learn .NET framework style stuff if you want to work in any type of business other than uh, either cutting edge or brand new startup type tech. Okay, you're going to have to use some older technology. All right, so the .NET framework is still alive and well. It's not being updated, but it's not end of life. It's still being supported. .NET Core is the way to go today. It's a solid, fast platform that will really do a lot of great things for you. Going forward, .NET 5 and .NET 6 are coming, and they're going to take the .NET platform to an even higher level of even more awesome stuff. .NET is on the rise. There's a lot of things that are really great about C Sharp. There's a lot of really things you can do with C Sharp, even before .NET 5. So even right now, even today, you can create plat create applications that run cross-platform. So on Mac, on Linux, on Windows, you can create IoT applications. You can create Xbox applications. You can create iPhone and Android and desktop and web and services and cloud-based, all this stuff with .NET. With .NET 5 and 6, when they unify that .NET platform, we'll be able to do even more with less changes. So now you can have one desktop application that works across platforms, maybe even across mobile and desktop. Now, even today with the Uno platform, we can do a lot of this stuff as well. So there's a lot of great things coming forward and it's getting so that there's not a platform out there that you can't write code for using just C Sharp. That's awesome. With Blazor client side or Blazor WebAssembly, you can write all of your client side code or most of it in C Sharp instead of having to use Angular, React, or Vue. And so you take those existing skills that you have in the back end and use in the front end as well. So C-Sharp is expanding, it's growing, it's open source, which is awesome. So 
the the level and of improvements is awesome. That does not mean the previous version is dead. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't know the previous version. It just means that there's even cooler stuff coming or even cooler stuff here today. So that's kind of it for this, this dev questions. Yes, .NET Framework is still viable. Um, but if you have new development, move to .NET Core. Once we get to .NET 5 and 6, move to those platforms as well. Um, if you have existing code, try the migration now uh, and start working through that because it's going to take some time. Okay. Learning, you can learn from .NET Framework and .NET Core projects. Learn about .NET Core first, and you'll understand the differences with .NET Framework. So you'll see it immediately. Okay, it's a little bit different. This is how we do it in .NET Core. For example, .NET Core has appsettings.json instead of app.config or web.config. Same principle, practically the same way of interacting with it, but it's a better and different way of doing it in .NET Core. So if you learn .NET Core first, then go back and, and use some of those, those tutorials or videos in .NET Framework, you'll still get a lot of value out of them. Okay, so don't just abandon those. All right, so that's the topic for today. If you have any questions about this topic or others that you'd like to see covered in a future Dev Questions video, leave those down in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.